one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this is the portion of the meeting that uh, if you're not on the agenda, we give you an opportunity to bring up whatever you're, you have uh, uh, want to talk about. We can't act on it. We can uh, listen to you and, and uh, act at a later date. So is there anybody that's got something they want to talk about? Uh, I'm Donna Schultz, and this is Benjamin Smith. Okay. Uh, we have an issue with uh, pedestrian safety on Terry Road. Uh, we kind of live in an area where there's hills on both sides. And Ben's at the age now where. So tell me, for, I don't mean to interrupt you, but from, is it from Cutshaw to 256? Is it from, it's, from it's Blotcher north, to, it's north. or is it is it north it's, of 256? It's uh, north of 256. It's North Terry Road. We're about three Before or four you get houses down from Terry. Okay. Uh, if that kind of gives you. Yeah, it does. So that's why I, I was trying to get a judgment of where you're at. So. Uh, but we live in an area where there's two hills that come and we're in this. Mm -hmm. And Ben's at the age now where he likes to go visit my brother, his uncle across the street or next door. Uh, and then my sister lives across the street, kind of category from us. Uh, he, wanted, he wanted to tell you a few things, but he's got a real bad safety issue with people not slowing down. Uh, I almost got hit twice. Wow. Yeah. The, the last so time. so you, are you getting around in, in, in your yeah. chair you're in now? Yeah. Okay. It looked like there was just one truck going 80. Okay. That, that last truck, my sister was screaming at those people. I mean, he was this close to Ben. And in an area, too, I don't know if you're familiar, a few years back, that same hill going south, mm -hmm. a car had went through there. I mean, they were flying. And they took out a whole trail. Before, and they went probably 100, 100 yards before they ended up in another driveway off, the, off that property, turned upside down. But he likes to go, wow. and, and we do notice that we have other neighbors that walk for health reasons or whatever they're doing, and it's just not safe, and we were hoping that maybe we could kind of convince you guys to put some kind of pedestrian safety sign there. Well, I don't think that would be a problem if, about issue, you're putting a sign up, but getting someone to adhere to that would be mm -hmm. something else, but, but um, uh, I think... Uh, we're doing some road studies right now, and I know uh, I don't know if that road was on that study, but we could we could add it to that study, and and we're trying to do this uh, with some engineers uh, to try to reduce some speed limits on some county roads. Um, so, uh, but we have to do a road study to reduce the speeds. So yeah, we, but we could put sign up, but we can put a, a uh, maybe two one each way. We can put signage up. Uh, to, to people, to give people uh, the word, or give them, give them some notice that you're right, you could possibly be out on the road, or he's out there a lot. <laughs> I mean, he, he just likes to go, and you know, he likes to go down to the to Herod, and he'll make a left there. He doesn't go quite often as much anymore, but they had goats down there. He would like to go see the goats down the road a little bit. He just likes to get out and have his freedom. Well, is there should. anything else you'd like to say to him? <laughs> okay. And I, I've noticed that if you go on south, there is a slow sign yeah. coming up the hill, but there's nothing when you go down the, in the valley. Yeah. Uh, and but what you need is something to say pedestrian or something of that nature. Pedestrian, yes, watch for pedestrian uh, or something. Yeah, there's a there's a possibility there's a human being down there, so be careful. You know, and uh, a lot of our neighbors they're really good about him. Uh, it's the ones that don't know. Yeah, and, and the young kids. The young kids are usually when the two that almost hit him were pretty not. I know one of them probably just barely looked like they had their license. And the people just need to be aware that there are people out there walking, or he's out there in his chair, and he doesn't have time to react right. and run. Well, he may or, not or see jump, them. He may not see him head. either if they're coming up behind him. So yeah, you know. and so, so about what we kind of love him, and we don't want to lose him to to somebody hitting him. About what address? It's a, our address is 5364 North Terry. Well, we'll get with, well, we, we may add that to our list, but we'll definitely get with the highway department and have them put up some signs immediately. I uh, spoke to the highway department a couple of years ago, a couple of times, and I kind of got ignored. So we didn't know what steps to take. So we kind of asked John some advice and he said, well, you know, come on down here and 
maybe we can help you. Well, I think that's an easy fix. So, so Thank you. yep, no problem. <coughs> Just, just continue to get out. Yeah, yeah he, he likes getting out. Okay. Yeah. My sister will get her grandson, and then she'll say, All right, I'm getting ready to go to bed, come get him. And, she, and he likes to go by himself, and he'll get to, he's too now. And he'll go over and put him on a chair and drive him back home. And he just likes to do, we raised him to be independent, and that's how he is. Um, and we want to keep him that way. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I appreciate you guys All right. listening. Thank you. Thank you. And you can stay or however you want to stay? Yeah. I think he's curious about what goes on, so I think he wants to stay. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like, uh, anybody, I guess, before I go on, has anybody else got anything they want to bring up before we move on? All right. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the health department. Looks like a grant application request. I know she's on vacation. I'm here. Thank you. Come on up. Thank you. Here's your vacation. Oh, okay. Thank you. She said she was talking about it. That'd be me. <laughs> That'd be you. Yes. This is, um, this is be the third year for this particular grant. It is a, basically a pass through the, Scott County is the fiscal agent for a position that is, um, empl uh, employs a uh, city readiness initiative regional coordinator that handles the, um, the District 9 uh, MSA, which is medically serviced area of Louisville and Cincinnati. So she's got about 10 counties that she is actually doing a lot of the preparedness documents and everything for as far as the um, preparedness. And she um, is employed basically through the healthcare coalition. Uh, we just use the money here. Uh, she's The only claims we ever have is her payroll, which is once a month. She's on contract. And um, because we're so late in getting everything situated from the state, there's only going to be like six or seven checks this time, so it's going to be quite a bit easier. So I'm just asking that you can um, <laughs> approve that and get it. Uh, Council's already approved it for uh, receiving the funding. And once I get it, I get you guys' approval. This is the one thing that I can invoice for in advance. So I can have, like I'll have uh, within the next week or so, uh, do the invoice for the state to get the first six months and then in January I can do uh, for three months which will cover so the money will be there once I get the initial invoices sent so this is something we've had in the past we're this is the third year for, asking for a renewal yes it has to be renewed every year okay any discussion I'll entertain a motion to accept the grant okay. thank you I I'll make that unanimous. that was easy yeah, I like these guys. <laughs> and then today's the 17th. I would like to bring up something real quick. Okay, this, uh, okay hang on. This is uh, the actual grant that goes th with the documents for the. Okay. For the, yes. I'd like to see Tim Brewer having his cells uh, provided by the health department. For him to have while on duty, he can leave it at the office when he's off duty. That way, he can take her calls at night. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's something I would like to see. Okay. Um. <laughs> I, okay. I, I, do you guys agree with that? Or? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Well, we need to, I think, and, I, you know, and I'm not, I'm at. We, I think we need to have him with a phone because there's some people that don't care if they're using your personal cell phone, but there's some that that do. Um, I guess we, we had a policy and then we had we took the policy away because we used to have phones for everybody and then they got abused. And I think and, we provided actual phones there for a long time, and then we had some stipends, and then it. State Board of Accounts has asked us for a policy, but we've never really written a cell phone mm -hmm. policy. So at budget time, Thank the you. council allocates to the people who have been given a cell phone stipend in the past. So it's going to be a budget thing because see, she might not even have a cell phone line item in Correct. her budget. Does she have the appropriation? Does she have any money that she can transfer into that to do that? So it's not <coughs> as easy as just getting it. It's a council matter as well because I mean, I've got one for the preparedness that's paid out of the preparedness funds. Right, I can't right. justify 
someone else having one that not doing the preparedness. Uh, it's written into my budget has been, I've had one for approximately 18, 20 years, just, and it's just a dual communication so that if mine goes out, um, mine's AT&T and this one is Verizon, as far as the, the work one in that way, you're almost always covered with, you know, with coverage in case there's a cell phone that goes, you know, down and it's just, um, just so that we've always got coverage as far as me being able to, to be contacted for the, for the preparedness part of it. Right, the question is, is it a possibility to go ahead and look in to see? Um, that would, I can speak with Michelle, yes, and that would be something that, I mean, we'd have to, like Tammy said, come up with the funds. I, we don't have anything in the line item you know, for, um, for regular cell phones because they've never been allowed until I, till, you know, some of the grants that we've got and Tim doesn't work on any grants. Yeah, right. So, right. so. I, I think it's a matter of, of uh, we charge a, a $50 fee, uh, you know, to be able to get set fixed in. And there's, there's people out there that uh, ask questions and they're having a hard time getting a hold of him. Well, I know he answers every phone call that that when it comes in, so right, the, during more normal business hours. Well, yeah, the, he, he, they leave him a voicemail, yes. so if he's out in the field, yes, and mm -hmm. the voicemail is on the office phone, then he doesn't mm -hmm. get to it till later. Mm -hmm. Well, the issue is, I think, when you have a crew of people out there working, and you're paying them all twenty-five, thirty dollars an hour, right. waiting for an answer really adds up. Mm -hmm. So they'll they'll make their own decisions. And have you talked with him? I mean, does he? Is he willing to carry one? As far as I know, he doesn't carry one personally. So if he does, he's never <laughs> given us a number. So, well, I'm not, <laughs> so I'm I don't not, know that he would carry one. I'm not but. trying to argue with you. I'm, 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 I'm not. not I'm, I'm right. just saying if we're going to charge a fee and we're going to have somebody in place of actually telling somebody how to put in a septic mm -hmm. system, then he needs to be available because right. if not, these people are going to get creative and make their own answers. And then it's going to be a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And, and that's not what you want. Right. That's not what you guys want. It's not what we want. Well, I think, I think when you get with Tim and, and see if, see if uh, he would carry a, a cell phone, but I, I guess I got a question because I don't know much about him, but uh, could we just get a burner phone as long as it's, the number stays the same and you just keep adding? I mean, because it, it's obvious he's not going to use it very often. Yeah, I don't know. I but, don't know how that but, yeah, and again, it's a, and I, I've talked to Teresa in the meantime to see if there was any line no. item or anything in the budget, and there's, there's not. No, because we never had one. Before. Never, never had one. So right. it's going to take so council action. It's going to have Correct. to, right, create a line, and then an appropriation or either a transfer is going to have to be made to even fund that project. So I hadn't talked to you in the meantime. So. But there is no line item yet for that, and that would be something that Michelle would have to. Well, I get ask what he's saying because the council, you know, he's out and he doesn't have a cell phone. That anybody knows what his number is, um, and someone's out on, like you said, out on a construction site. They need to know the answer now, um, you know, and he's not going to get an answer possibly for hours or, mm -hmm. you know. So, I don't know I that I don't know that's ever been an issue as far as him not returning phone calls and, and you know getting back with people as soon as he gets back in the office. So well, no, it's not your I'm, it's I'm, not your decision anyway. Oh, that's correct. And I'm not saying it's yeah. been an issue him not returning phone calls. As a matter of fact, everybody says Tim has done a great job. It's mm -hmm. just how long it takes. And you know it's, it's understandable if he's out on the job, he's doing things. You know, right. he, he it, hours go by before he gets that message. Okay. Let's let's just reach out to, I guess Tim, and maybe have a conversation with him about how we could he could better be available for you know for people's phone calls, and if it's a, a phone that we have to you know get and, and charge to his department, then maybe that's what we do. Like I said, I don't. I don't have to add to minutes every month. And so as long as you keep the same number, as right. if he doesn't use it, I mean. Right, but someone's going to have to go and yeah. buy the minutes and yeah. have a yeah. you know, have a, know. a card to buy the minutes with or something then. I, I, don't, I don't know anything about them. So. All right, we'll get with Tim. Right, thank you. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, <laughs> looks like next on the agenda is the Sheriff's Department Life Spring Service Agreement. Oh, God, thanks. contract to or it's not a contract. Okay. So, yeah. Hey, 
Hey, Ben. How you Hi. doing, buddy? Good. <laughs> uh, first thing, the um, live springs, that's the mental health agreement. Basically what it says is, is they come in eight hours a week. It's the same agreement we've had with them for the last several years, so there's no changes on that. It's all the same. Just have to redo it every year. So that'll be for 2022. Right, familiar with that, uh, Randy. I know you're not. Mm -hmm. and you're uh, every year. Yeah, it's it's from mental health services that Wild Springs comes. They actually come into the jail, don't they? Yeah, they do. Eight hours a week, and so, they talk to our folks that uh, are having suicidal thoughts or have some kind of a, you know issues that's going on. So they speak to them. Stay available and call to if mm -hmm. you need them. Yeah, so, yeah. That, Council has already, already been to them, or you need to. Well, it's just an agreement. This is it's in my budget, so it's, it's just some, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion pass. Um, I mean, have we ever talked with anybody else to see if anything cheaper? Who else is there? Uh, <laughs> Who else is there? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm just, just yeah. No. Just, no, this is something, and uh, the Life Springs works with our other programs with inside of the jail. Uh, our JCAP program and our Grace program, and they do the interviews of the people that decide who's going to be able to go in the program and who's not because they deal with them. See if people are serious about, you see what I'm saying, or if they're just playing the system, trying yeah. to play the system. So, yeah. I, I'm, I'm okay with that because I've never, I don't have any experience with it, so I thought I'd ask make sure Yeah. That, yeah, I'm okay with us. And to further add to that just a little bit, they're almost like Purdue, the state. Life Spring is the state mental health service. They kind of back Purdue and they want Purdue in every county. And we pay Life Spring certain tax dollars out of general fund too because it's the state go to agency for mental health services. So he's using the state approved <coughs> for all that. So and I just wanted to add that to that too. And the money's already in place. Yeah, it's all in the budget. budget. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I'll make a motion. Second. Randy second that, and I'll make that unanimous. <coughs> you got one I need to sign? Uh, should be in there. Okay, I'll, I'll I've got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. She got the official one? This is, let me just go ahead and give you. I, I brought her the, both those contracts and some other things for the signs. Uh, uh, we can get this while we're talking about that. There you go. Oh. two originals. Okay, there you go. And got copies in their packets. It's on the back side. All right, next thing we talk about is a Walgreens agreement. What this agreement is, is just saying it's a, sets up an account. Sets up an account stating that Walgreens ships us medications that will pay the bill. That's what this is. Nothing more, nothing less. So and it also gives us access to some discount medicines to Walgreens. That it? Yeah. Randy, I'm sorry, Sheriff. Uh, I was, I was oh, about I, yeah, the Walgreens agreement. Basically, what it is is it's a, uh, it's an agreement from us telling them that they'll put us on a, <clears throat> an account and they'll bill us every 30 days, and that we'll pay the bill. Basically, stating that we agree to pay the bill if they send us <clears throat> the medicines. It doesn't. That's something you're already doing, or is it just? No, this, we have to start now because it's first of the year. So we got six yeah. uh, folks with HIV that we'll have to start paying for in January okay. 1st. So uh, that's just how we do it. I got a question. Is uh, this lock us into using Walgreens? No. No, this is just saying that we want to set up an account with them. We can deal with whoever we want to. Okay. There's it's nothing. I, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Like if the contract, we have to buy all our meds from Walgreens. So no. you could search for prices. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, right. I've got a. a an email's floating around and a couple of people checking on something in Indianapolis where um, asking whether there's a state uh, there's a state uh, I guess figure out there for prescription drugs for mm -hmm. if the county buying them um, and there's several people looking to see if, see if there's a state buy. bid I said, you, you bid everything else out of the way. Why mm -hmm. wouldn't there be prescriptions? Because yeah, maybe uh, knowing what what they pay compared to what you know, some of the bills I've seen that um, you know, I've, I and actually I say that because I got a niece that's a pharmacist and a 
daughter-in-law is a pharmacist, and and I asked them to check the prices of HIV drugs, and and uh, it's almost like you know we're getting the same price as every person that walk into the store. So mm -hmm. I'm, uh, th I think there ought to be a discounted price someplace. So. And there very well could be because before we didn't worry about it because the state yeah. had it. So, <laughs> so anybody uh, got anything to say about this or? I like it. I'm great. Me too. Can we? Uh, so I guess let me ask you again. This is only like a card that you would have that. You know, if you order drugs, they, you would have an account. Yes, that account. account they would know that you're you're set up and that they're going to just send it without and know the payment would come in the mail. Yes, exactly. They bill us like every thirty days or sixty days, whatever their billing cycle to be, instead of every time that we call and order a medication that you know what I'm saying that we would have to pay for it up front before they would send it to us. Is basically what it is. Okay. Right. In other words, if you needed something from them now, you'd have to have cash in advance. Mm -hmm. you yes, we'd have to pay for it. And have it arranged ahead of time. Yes. This allows you just to have an account with them. Yeah. I think that's kind of almost normal of any business. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want an account. We just set up terms with them, and if yeah. we use them, we use them. If we don't, we, we don't. don't. Yeah, yeah, they just give you the opportunity. And like I said, if there's a not cheaper alternative, obviously, you know what I'm saying, we would look into that and find it. So. Well, I, I mean, I, the only concern I have is walking in, or if it was a walk-in contract. Yeah, like we had with, to use it. Yeah, yeah, no. That we can't go somewhere else. So. Yeah, no. So, Randy, you want to wait? I, I, I'd i like to postpone the answer. Is that all right? I mean, no, that's fine. We can read it to the first uh, one. Yes, yeah, there's, there's a long one. January 1. There's, oh, a, well, there's well, a book here of things that we are talking about. I like that. Yeah. Let's table it till uh, November our 20. November 29th, yes. 9th yes. meeting. Why don't you, you want to hold on to the original? Or? Yeah. I'll let Tammy, let Tammy hold on to yeah. That way we'll be moved around. Yeah. I don't want to be responsible for that. Okay. <laughs> All righty. The uh, next thing I was going to talk to you about uh, is the radio situation. The low band 800s, and I know that we're getting ready. Or, uh, we're not getting ready. You guys are getting ready to make a decision on uh, using the uh, low band system. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to make sure that you guys realize that we have to have the 800 system. Has that been explained to you? Well, you saying you have to is mm -hmm. you're the only sheriff that's ever had it. So uh, so I don't know where you're going that you have to have an 800 system. We have to have an 800 system because we have to talk to the state police. We have to talk to DNR. We have to talk to the FBI. We have to talk to Clark County. We have okay. to talk to Jackson County. Jennings County, and without the 800 system, we can't do it. We can't even talk to staff light without the 800 system. Well, let me clarify something, Jerry. Mm -hmm. I got a radio right here. Mm -hmm. I can talk. I can talk to staff light on this. This is low band. Okay. Then why isn't everybody? Why do they I've always had, call us? They I'm said they can't talk to low band. The staff light always says we need somebody with the 800 system. No. I had a. They, we had a meeting out uh, with staff light air methods actually. Uh, out at uh, the Scottsbridge Fire Department, and I there were several people there, fire departments there, and, I, and police and sheriffs, and and I said, would you please clarify that you can talk to anybody on any radio at any time? And they said they could. Okay, we need you need to get that in writing. I don't need Seriously. it in writing. I, well, was, I, I, mean, I, I know I would like to see it because well, that's that good. Mm -hmm. That counts if you know that. You know, know the telling us. So I'm just trying to make sure they don't trying to sell a bill of goods they can't pick uh, up. <laughs> Well, I don't know about stat fight because we, but I we've talked to them on iHerm too and on any, any channel they want. I'll Jeff, they can talk to anybody on the low band as long as it's iHerm or I. Where we have the or system, I we need. talk on our fire or EMS or police frequency. Well, uh, I just know that they, you know, I've talked to them plenty of time on that radio right there. So well. And, actually, I, and, I, and I, here's the thing about it is, is this, and to be honest with you, it don't matter. That's just one of the issues for us. The other issue is, is Clark County, Jennings County, all the surrounding counties, because there was a gentleman that lost his life named Mr. Ben Bertram. Uh, Scott County was on a low band system, and they were having a pursuit in Scott County on the 800 system. We didn't even know it was here until after it crashed. 
Yeah. So if we would have had, you know, I'm saying, you're for me, I don't have to explain. You don't have to do that because, like I said, uh, when you ran for sheriff, uh, you know, at that time we had a radio system that the, the local fire departments and EMS couldn't hear the sheriff's department anyway. And, and actually, we don't care if they hear us. That's the key to it. I don't but you care. you changed your radios. So 800s, now, yeah, no, because no. we have to. No, you well, don't have yes, to. Yes, we do. Okay. You have I'm not, not, I'm not going to argue. If, if I need advice on how to run a police department, I'll ask somebody who knows well, what you need about a fire department, I'll call you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, we have to have it. You can argue all you want. Well, I'm just but telling you're wrong. You. Well, no, I'm not wrong. I, I you're you wrong. It, uh, Never I know exactly. Hey, this is my meeting. Meeting. This is my okay, meeting. Okay, that's fine. And we're going to run it like I want. And that's I'm not, fine. But you're not going to lie. I'm not. You're not. Well, now you're lie. calling me a liar. Yes. Okay. What did you say, John? No, I was just going to say. I think. Uh, hang on. Uh, we are looking to the other radios. Don't ever call me I a don't. liar again. Okay. Then don't do it. I don't think yeah, this really? will prevent you from using the 800s, I don't think. But I think cool. you said you yes, might it does. No, it does. Yes, it does. It does to prevent us using it. What do we do with, we what have we do to, with the last we chairs? We have to, we, we, this is something that the state has implemented. That wow. they're, they're, everybody in the state is getting on. You're getting on a system that when they go out of Scott County, who are they going to talk to? Who's who? Who's Scottsburg, Scott Austin, Scott County Sheriff's Office. Anybody that goes out of Scott County on a call, that's chasing somebody or somebody's needs. Who are they going to talk to when they pick up I'm that radio gonna, call? I'm not going to argue with you, Jerry. Because you're wrong. I'm, That's why. No, I'm not. John, yes, sir. I know why I'm wrong. Well, that was just it. I, I, the 800, we had 800 when I was over 11 years ago. Yes, exactly. It's nothing new, but it wasn't mm -hmm. It wasn't the sole radio we had back then. Right. We did have low band back then, too. Yeah. Well, I carried uh, an 800, thing, too. Uh, but I don't understand why you still couldn't use the 800. Because it's obsolete, the system we have, we have to have an upgrade. The the eight hundred system's upgrade I mean, just like the low band system. Yeah, but it's going to cost us. That's okay. what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's where I'm going with this, is that this system, if you want, you know, I, I don't know any other counties that use it as a primary system. You know, I'm saying there may be some, but I don't know any that do. Okay, and they all have to have the eight hundred system. I just spoke to Brown County Sheriff Jeff. Told me to call him and talk to him. Yeah. I called and talked to him. I said, hey, I heard you're getting rid of the 800 system going to low band system. He said, absolutely not. We're getting, not getting rid of the 800 system. He said, how do you expect us to talk to anybody? It was his exact words. He said, we bought the low band system for a backup system. Okay. These low band systems like that for the county agencies are backup systems. Now, they work fine for a fire department or a city department because they don't hardly ever go out of jurisdictions. And they don't talk to other agencies that much. We have to talk to everybody, and everybody's on the 800. And if we're not upgraded, 800 system has to be upgraded. And if we don't upgrade, we can't talk to them. It's that simple. What kind of upgrade do you need? I mean, it's going to probably, we are in the process of getting a tower, an 800 tower donated to us. And we're going to put that at Hardy Lake. If we can get that put up, then the state of Indiana will come in and maintain that tower until 2037. We don't have to mess with it. It's the state of Indiana. Stay up, keep mm -hmm. it, they do everything. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the only another problem that we have with the low band system is this. We have to maintain the tires on them. They have to maintain all the equipment on them. If lightning strikes a, a repeater on the on the low band system, who pays for it? Mm -hmm. Scott County does. If lightning strikes a, a repeater on the 800 system, guess who pays for it? State of Indiana pays for it. We don't. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's that simple. We have to talk to other people. We just can't talk to Scottsburg and Austin. And because we've got dual band radios that we do that now. We bought special radios that are dual band radios so that we could talk to the city of Austin and the city of Scottsburg and the fire departments. We had those. But we have to have the 800 system. There is no questions asked about it. It has to be the 800 system for us because we talk to everybody. How much money are we talking about for an upgrade? Uh, yeah, how much I mean, was what is the upgrade? It's going to cost the same amount of money, probably as the low band systems. What they tell me if we get the tire donated to us. Okay. So when I'm hearing figures on the low band, Jeff's here. He can he knows the official number. Just under five hundred. Okay, that's what it was going to be for the for the eight hundred upgrade. According to Motorola Nipsa, they gave me and I gave you put an existing eight hundred system on the cell phone tower. Was going to be. They're donating that now because we would have had to bought the tower. Now they're donating. They're going to give us the tower. So when uh, well, you're still talking about the equipment, which is seven hundred fifty thousand, yep. we have to have anyway. We don't even have low band handheld radios. 
What'd you do with the ones you had? They wore out. They're junk. They're, they don't work anymore. They weren't even there when I come here. That's why we had to switch back to 800 because they couldn't even talk to anybody. If you, if you went to Lexington and you had a, it was fighting with somebody, you had to pick up your low band radio, find the channel that you had to go to so it could talk because of the way the repeater system was set up. Now, I'm not arguing about this new system. If you think that's the best system for you guys, that's fine. I don't care. That's not my lane. I'm just telling you we have to have an 800 radio system at the sheriff's office. So the radios, the, the low band radios you used to have are gone? They're gone. So where'd they go? I have no idea. They was gone before we got there. Well, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to check because uh, there, there was one issue for every one of your members. And there was a, and that's when was that, property. 2006 or 2007? There's property. a lot of county property that's missing that ain't accounted for, too. And some of it that you wouldn't cooperate and help them find either. So well, you know, I'm, I, we do an audit. Let's have a, let's, we do an audit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Let, me have, we did an let audit. me have you have a state detective come to my I, house. We, well, did you cooperate? No, I didn't. There you go. Why would you cooperate trying to find a county property? I didn't. I don't you control the state police. You're so crap. See, there you go. That's, That's what I'm saying. When you lose, you're the liar. No, you're the liar. Okay, I'll take an oath on it. Sure. Yeah, I don't you have will. to. Please. I'm this done. Public you got something else to talk about. Yes, I do. Because I'm about to end with talking to you. Well, good. That's good. Because you've got a little bit more that you've been, again, telling untruths about. Okay? And that is the automobile situation that I have over here at the at the sheriff's office. Okay? I have 45 automobiles that we use for the Scott County Sheriff's Office. 45. I have 30 police employees. Okay? I have 30 that's assigned to officers. I have six jail cars. Two prosecutor's cars that I bought, the sheriff's office bought, and gave to the prosecutor's office. It was with some of our older cars, and we bought cars to replace them. We gave them to the prosecutor's office. Okay? I have a car that I bought and gave to Andrew because he didn't have a car to drive for his uh, technology stuff to put his equipment and all that stuff in. He did not have a car to be able to do it in. I bought it for him, okay, because he needed it. You guys told me I could do that, okay? So that's three cars there that you say that I have that I don't have, that they belong to whoever. And I've also got another vehicle that you guys use every single day, and not one single time have you said anything about it. And that's that semi-tractor and trailer at the, at the Scott County Highway Department. That was purchased by the Scott County Sheriff's Office. And they use it every single day. That's one of the vehicles that you guys are saying that I've got. Okay? So if that's mine, then Friday morning, bring it to either John Jones or to the Sheriff's Office. I'll take the license plates on it. We'll put it for sale sign on it, and we'll sell it. That's only about $100,000. Was that purchased, or did you get that through the military? That is Liso military, but guess what? I, I was just asking. No, 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 I get that, because I'm going to go there, too, okay? That, nobody can get that except the sheriff's office. That's it. We did that. I spent my guys' time and budget, okay, to let them do that for you guys, for the county highway, okay? Now, there's a forklift down there that belongs to the sheriff's office. There's a record down there that belongs to the sheriff's office. The low boy trailer, all that belongs to me. And you guys are going around here saying, bad stuff but i've all this equipment all these cars and everything belongs to me and i've got five six seven of them that, that i'm loaning to you guys to use well first of all let me correct you the cars that you gave to andrew that you gave to the to the uh prosecutor mm -hmm. those are on their list of cars they're on my list no they're not i just pulled the list well i did too i've got it I've got those. I got the semis. That, I've got a guy that's in charge of, that does all that stuff, and this is exactly what to get. We got a list of them. So basically, what I want to say is, is this: out of those 45, 49 car total, counting the ones that you got there that you're saying that's on the other list, 26 there's of those no, cars. There's two for the prosecutor. Okay, but well they're on my list. Well, they may be on that list there, but we're the ones that service them and take care of them. This is the list I count your cars off of. Okay, well. And there's the IT guy right there. That's a, exactly. Thing. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. Okay? What I'm trying to tell you is, is that those are our cars 
we purchased or let you guys use I, them, I, and you're that. counting that saying no, that I'm those. Not. Yes, you are, Terry. Because I heard the list. I've got the list too. I just had my guy Bobby Thompson go through it and tell me this is what we're responsible for. He's well, got the VIN numbers on it. These are what is off the insurance and who it, who, okay. it, who it goes to what department right. for their budget. Absolutely. Let me. I mean, That's I can, exactly. I can right. go through right here and count every one of yours. Okay. Those care. cars you're talking about aren't on this on your list. Well, they are because we're paying. We were paying for them. Uh, never mind. That, that's I'm, we'll, I'm not, we'll, I'm that's the next time. With. That's I'm, the next I'm time. Not I'm not going to argue about today. But what aggravates me is is this: of all these equipment cars that we've got that you say we have, thirty of those were purchased or given to the sheriff's office. Okay, thirty of them. All right, and six of those are the jail. So you take minus the. The 19 that the county bought, that puts it at 13 cars. They don't even have enough to cover the full-time guys that we have. We purchased the extra cars to do that. And for some reason, somebody, I don't know who it is, I'm not going to say who it is because I don't know, going around saying we've got all these cars sitting around and all stuff. I have to have four pool cars for officers right now. I have four pool cars for uh, reserves also. Okay? Because I've got 26 cars with over 100,000 miles on them that we're driving. I got 29 cars that's seven years or older. Okay? These are police officers that's driving these cars at high rates of speed into emergency situations over 100,000 miles on them. But you know what? I didn't go and moan and groan to the council. I didn't go and moan and groan and tell them we need this. I worked with the council and they gave me the budget <coughs> to be able to have these cars to keep them fixed, to keep them insured. Okay? So it's that simple. So whoever it is that says that we've got all this equipment, all I'm asking is tell them to come and talk to me about it and I'll explain it to them. Okay. I, I, I want to say something real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. So, if you want to go to the county highway drive mm -hmm. and get your stuff mm -hmm. and take it and sell it to prove your point, no. I suggest you go ahead, Jerry. Because well, what you're, what you're hurting is that's not the why parties. I won't do it. Excuse me. What you're hurting is not the parties. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a, an argument over the parties. What you're doing is you're hurting the public. That's no. back down. Here's, here's but the that's problem. what you want to do. You go right ahead. Let me tell you this, okay? That's why I won't do it. That's why I'm saying if somebody ain't got the intestinal fortitude to stand up and tell the truth and they want to go around and tell everybody that I've got all this equipment, but then they fail to mention that I have to, you know, five, six, seven, or eight of those cars, okay? That's the problem. They cause everybody else to use them. That's well, the I, issue. I can't, okay? I can't get into that because I haven't seen this. There's a list. Well, that's, I don't think but the list is accurate because we keep an accurate list because we work on them every the day. Well, I mean, well, I, that was just that is my list that we try to validate against the insurance list. We have it broken down possibly different than you've got it. We've got everything that we take care of. I, by the minutes, we have separated the vehicles so we know which departments that the sheriff, because notes on the insurance schedule says sheriff slash prosecutor. But in our mind, we knew it went to prosecutor for the inventory first. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you've got that list in your packets. Both, all of you have that list and, and the return. Yeah. Yeah. So the bottom line on this is, you're exactly right. That's why I won't do that, because I am for the taxpayer and I'm for the people. That's why I won't do it. But whoever's telling the lies, Okay. okay. I'd say we're off agenda. Then, then when you go, okay, that's fine. Discussion. I'm getting we're, tired of the lie. We're not talking about yeah. anything that's on. That's that why I try to get everybody to tell the truth so we don't get off Because <laughs> I can back so up what I, I guess say. the next time we'll have a judge come in here and swear by him. Yeah, we need to. I'll be more happy to do it because I don't know. I don't, I'm just telling the truth. Some people can't handle it when the truth. Right, here's the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. What else you got? Uh, let me see here. Oh, I need to publicly exonerate uh, Josh Juliot. Back in uh, a couple of meetings ago, two, three, I don't know what it was, you mentioned that there was a picture of a police car sitting at the New Albany Fire Department. Uh, of course, everybody knew that Josh Juliot worked for the New Albany Fire Department. Uh, I'm the one that gives the orders of where they can drive the vehicles, where they can't drive the vehicles. Josh Juliot had driven his vehicle to the fire department that morning because he was coming straight off of work from the fire department straight to work for us. Okay? And he was going to be working. We didn't want him being late for work or what it was, so we told him we didn't want him doing it to help us out as a favor for us. So it was under the assumption when that was told that he was doing something wrong. And he was not doing absolutely nothing wrong. So I want to make a public exoneration of Josh Juliot for the record. 
because he was insinuated that he had done something wrong when he did not. Is he a full-time? He is a part-time deputy. Part-time. Okay. That we use constantly to save the taxpayers money. And again, I just got another letter from the state police uh, that says that basically they're not going to be able to help us. Their manning is low. I've got the letter right here. It says that uh, we're going to have to pick up the slack on any calls on the interstate and stuff that they're not going to be able to come out and help us like they normally do. So we'll have to pick that up and, and do that. Who's that from? Tracy Spencer. Okay. And he sent it to... He told me that, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, he sent it to Zellers, uh, Sean Hurt, uh, Washington County Sheriff, and then myself. So... I didn't know. I read something about that. Yeah. They're just shorthanded. So who's not at this point? You know what I'm saying? Right. So. All right. I think local government's picking it up more they are. every year. They're pushing it all back to us. Yeah. That's all I got. Unless you got any questions for me. Yeah. All right, next thing on the agenda. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing is on the agenda is, uh, I guess, the second reading of, uh, of uh, the ordinance that we uh, first read last month or last meeting. Last reading. And uh, the vote was 2-1 uh, to pass the ordinance, and because it didn't pass unanimously, that it would have to come to a second reading. So tonight's the second reading. So, uh, I guess, attorney, Mr. Attorney, do we need to read the whole thing again? I would say that would be a good idea. Appropriate? Yeah. All right. Ordinance number 2120 or 020. <laughs> The 40 County Commissioners of Scott County, State of Indiana, an ordinance adopting a policy prohibiting take home vehicles for any county employee or positions other than the regular full time employees, whereas presented to IC 36 2 2 2, the three member board of commissioners elected under the same chapter as elected officials in their capacity as such, the board may transact business on behalf of the county, whereas presented to IC code 36 2 3. Uh, 5-4 B and 6 they, the county executive is entrusted to authority and obligated to supervise the care and custody of all county property including the real and other property whereas from time to time the board of commissioners have purchased certain vehicles in the name of the county to be used by the county departments and whereas and sorry employees for county business whereas in order to reduce the cost of repair maintenance and in order and increase the longevity of the county's fleet of vehicles the scott county board of commissioners has determined to limit the use of the county's vehicles for certain county employees now therefore to be resolved by the county or the board of commissioners of the scott county state of indiana as follows definition as used in this ordinance vehicles shall mean any county owned equipment which registered requires registration by the state of indiana or liability coverage under the county's liability insurance policy as used in this ordinance, regular full-time employees shall mean all those employees or position holders who meet each of the following criteria. Those individuals who are not in part-time, introductory, or seasonal temporary status. Those individuals who are scheduled to work the county's full-time schedule. And those individuals who are eligible for the county or the employer's benefit package subject to terms, conditions, and limitations of each benefit program. Policy. Uh, it shall be the policy of the Scott County to prohibit any county employee or county position holder who is not a regular full-time employee as defined above to have a take-home vehicle or vehicle for use, personal use. This vehicle, this policy shall apply to each and every department of Scott County. This policy shall not prohibit Scott County employees from use of county vehicles while working in their official capacity on county business. Any vehicles used for business purposes by the employee must be returned to an approved or designated location at the end of the day, work day or shift. Designation location shall be determined by the department heads. 
This policy shall not apply to regular full-time employees as defined above. This policy shall not apply to elected officials. Based on the based passed and adopted by this date and uh, whatever date that they passed the it tonight. Yeah. That's the so, John, you got anything? Randy, you got anything? We'll make a motion to pass it. Anything? No. Randy made a motion or uh, made a motion to pass the ordinance uh, 2021-021. So I'll second that motion, John. I vote nay. John votes nay. So uh, I guess uh, I'm going to vote yay. Randy. Yeah. Randy votes yay. John votes nay. So. Two to one, it ordinance passes. <coughs> All right. Next thing on the agenda is the public defender board appointment. Has everybody had an opportunity to discuss that with figure out if there's somebody else I, I put up a person last week or last meeting uh, Stacy Mullen who, uh, uh, Joey. Joey asked for well my again my person that I I was going to nominate was Christian Evans so if anybody uh, if you want to vote on both of them or, or well, I'm going to vote for Stacy simply because that's who Joey wanted so but that's, I mean, I, I get it. There's other people too. So, I, I only met the one, so I'm going to vote for him because that's okay. I, you know, yeah. Christian. He'd probably be good too. That's not so you make a motion to accept Christian Evans as the as our public defender board appointment. John, you no, I'll second. I just put my preference would have been state. No, he'd, know, he'd be good. He'd be her. good. He'll be good. You're right, either one of them. But yeah. uh, I'll make that unanimous. So we'll just, uh, when we get a hold of Christian, let him know that he's on that board. Uh, next thing on there is uh, the Leota Covered Bridge Roof Repair Quotes. And I had one that came to me today. And I know that, I don't know how we're going to do this because, John, you were saying that the, the committee out there the kind of came, yeah. came with one. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a three, there's a third one? Mm -hmm. I think Randy okay, had good. one sent to me yesterday. I found it was on my desk. Uh, and they're put together with a paper clip. Yeah, I see that. Do we want to read these now that we have three bids? And just to kind of clarify on the public purchase thing, it's, it's, if they're under $50,000, you don't even have to take quotes. You can't. I mean, that's your preference. If it's 50 to 150, you have to have three. And if it's over 150, then we have to go through the public bid process, seal bids and all that. So I just wanted to clarify that. So just make sure that, you know, you guys just, that's just basic rule. I think so I just got you can, bid. You can adopt a local policy. Should have been, should have been on that. Part, yes, oh, you can adopt it's, a local it's policy. Staple behind, or paper clip behind that. And I'll piggyback on Zach. If you guys want to adopt a local be right. policy for purchasing for your board, as it is now, you oh, can write she one. Cheat you again, John. <laughs> Here, here's the three. I don't even know. I, I know what two had more of it. Everybody's got, yeah, those that get it. in your pack. You, you should have it clipped in your pack. He didn't get John. it. He saved it. Okay, let me, is, you, is there a paper clip in his uh, I, you know, I don't think I, I don't even, no. I'm just looking at this. I'm just, okay, I'm assuming down. they're all operating off the same metal roof thing here. Uh, the one quote that I got, yeah. it was a regular steel roofing, was, and then he came with that that overlaps yeah. and does the so you can't see the seams and stuff. Same yeah. thing. What do you call that, Randy? Here, the contractor. I'm sorry. Seamless guttering or whatever. But yeah, seamless guttering. So, or gut, not guttering. I'm sorry. Uh, roofing. So, is all three of these the I, same? Do you think? I mean. I'm not a roof guy. Let me see. Well, that's why I'm That's why I want to make sure we're all, we can, 
you know, we we want to vote for the one that will last the longest, even if it is a little price difference. Which I know is metal, but I don't know roofing well enough to know. So can we read these? Yeah. So I just didn't want to, I know before we were talking about yeah. estimates and then we read them and everybody knows what their estimate is and they just come in lower than the next one. So yeah, do we, do we yeah, want this is not a closed bid uh, situation. It's not do we want in excess to of 150,000. Use uh, people's names. I won't use yeah. their names right now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I have one estimate here. I'll just read it. Estimate for regrowth of Leo Bridge, 29 gauge metal fasteners with screw, screws colored to be determined from our color charts. Place 5 8 OSA over existing roof to be fastened with screws due to the deterioration of the plywood that is showing. Screws will hold longer. Place synthetic underlay beneath metal, metal trim covering gutter boards and fly rafters. And the, the price is nineteen thousand eight hundred ninety eight dollars and twenty cents the second one i have uh he actually uh bid it two different ways uh roof estimate estimate is removing the existing shingles and replacing with metal after shingles have been removed we will clean the roof deck and replace at least one sheet of three quarter inch cdx plywood new synthetic underlayment will be installed over decking before metal roofing and then he again he has two different uh, types here. He goes unipanel option, regular barn metal, 29 gauge metal with rubber washer, screws, vented under ridge cap, includes all trim and accessories. Price is $6,900.50, or I'm sorry, $6,950. The second option he had was standing seam option, no exposed fasteners, 26 gauge metal, vented under roof carriage, ridge cap, Included all trim and accessories is $13,850. The last bit here uh, looks like tear off existing roof, install ice and water underlayment to valleys, install synthetic felt, install aluminum drip edge, install new boot, boots on protrusions, dump feed, removal and install new decking. Um, and it looks like uh, his is. $4,500. Replace fly rafters with treated lumber if needed, and that was an option for $400 more. So 400 looks like his is $4,900. Has a five-year warranty. Uh, I think this one has, I guess, I should have ten, a 10-year workmanship. He had a, he had a 10 year workmanship warranty as well as all material labor and disposable fees. Uh, and the other one was, uh, I don't see a warning on it. I'm sure it has one, but I don't see one. So there's your. I have a suggestion. There's your that's pleasure. That's all it is, a suggestion. Because I don't claim to know roofing. I don't know so I to. I would like to see if we could let Josh take a look at these and make sure we're all speaking apples to apples, not apples to oranges, and come back with a recommendation. Why don't we? Why don't we have Ben Petty look at them? That would be fine. Somebody he's, knows the business. I mean, he's the. And they could come back and tell us. I mean, I'm looking at one is 29 gauge, and the yeah, other one's 26, 26 gauge. Yeah. And I don't know that whether that's a big. Well, I don't either. Yeah, that oh, would I'm, be fine to me. Uh, I think. I think we have three good estimates. I think they're. I think, you know, of course, one's a little higher than the other one, but the other one, the other one yeah. seemed to. I don't think he had. On the last one I read, he didn't give a gauge of mm -hmm. metal that he was going to use. And for what it's worth, just Did you get that from him. Right. You know, it's, it is and I think, but he's going to be either twenty-six or twenty-five. Yeah, I'm sure choices. it's going to be likewise. So. You had told me this, Mike, and I, I talked to Tammy about it too. Is just so people won't get confused. This is money comes from the state of Indiana that pays for bridges. Yeah. It's it's not a local covered income bridges. tax type thing. It's covered it's, bridges. It's covered bridges only. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there's we have I think our estimates are like thirty-five thousand dollars in the that's fund. What, that's what it is right there. And uh, so it's that, there's going to be new money coming in every year. It's like yeah. fifteen hundred dollars or something. So I just don't want people to think we're spending, but we need to spend it wisely though. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's not too many covered bridges in the state anymore, and the state is trying to keep the ones that are yeah up and keep them send the money to keep them in good shape so i let's table this and see if we can give this to ben or to josh maybe but, both 
or and uh, and then have them look and maybe the one that didn't have a gauge of metal can kind yeah, of give us the gauge of metal. So they can give us some guidance. So that's more than that. Hold on to that. And uh, we do still need to be careful, I think, to not let people see the what each one is doing. Oh, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I will say is that all three of these contractors are local. So. Yeah, that means a lot. That, so that's a, that's a positive. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Uh, payroll ratification for November the 5th. Everybody had an opportunity to look at that? I'm good. I'm good. I need a... I'll make a motion. Randy makes a motion. I'll Ron second. Seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. Uh, consideration of the minutes from uh, November the 3rd. Revenue. Well, yeah. I'm good with them. You go with the minutes? Yes, I am. I'll make a motion. John yeah. makes a motion. Randy seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. Uh, consideration, no. Interviews for the transfer station position and the EMS director. I can do interviews or I can vote. I don't care. I actually, because you know, I'm going to. Uh, I know some of these people, so I'd like to actually, uh, I'd like to actually have some interviews. Good idea. And I think because uh, there, there's some people that are past employees, and some people that are, mm -hmm. have, are I know they can do the job, and mm -hmm. and uh, I'd like to at least set them down and and you know. I agree with that. Do that. So you go with me. Oh, absolutely. I don't know most of them, so I would like very much that. And we set. Well, we're we're also talking about the EMS director. So Friday was the deadline for the applications, and we have the applications. Yes, she's already. All right. Um, let's do this, uh, and this is how we've done it in the past. If you don't want to do that, we'll do something different. But um, pick your top three or top four or how you know if you got more than that i guess you're talking about both jobs both jobs yeah pick your top three or four and uh and we'll if they're the same then we're good if we you know if if, if somebody picked one that's the other two didn't then i guess we can go you know an next one or something but just pick your top three or four on on both in other words, we're going to pick the top three or four. We're going to interview yes. four interviews. That's correct. Rather than interview. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll see if they're all, some of them, are, most of them are going to be matches. I mean, yeah. um, and then we'll. Process a little bit. Can we do. Um, next week is short week. we got Thanksgiving next week. Um, so that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That may be a difficult week if you get past Tuesday to get anybody to. Come. I'm going to make a suggestion here. I. I think the I think the EMS director position is the most important one right now, mm -hmm. and I I would I'd rather have it first. And if we have to wait a week to do the second ones, mm -hmm. uh, you go with that. Yeah. You go with that. So, so next week, short week, we'll just do it on Thursday. Thursday, that'll work. Yeah. We'll just start Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> that'll work. Yeah. Scared sure. me. I thought he was serious. <laughs> <laughs> no. So what's Turkey in an interview. Can uh, <laughs> have big meal here. <laughs> no, can we talk that. about Monday night, Tuesday night? What are you thinking? I, let me look at my schedule. I, I hate to make decisions here um, on that kind of stuff because I get on my. You wife. guys have a special meeting on Monday. It's on the. It's on That's the. It. Uh, at ten o'clock on the twenty second. At what time? At ten a.m. It's at the yeah. bottom of your agenda. I put the next three meetings on there. Oh, yeah. Okay. So November 22nd at 10 a.m. I prefer Tuesday or something. It's Monday. I've got other things to do. So let's go Tuesday night then. Yeah, let's start it. Okay. So, so you guys need to get names to me we'll get because to everybody's going to be more busy. So, And I'm I'm out of here Friday because i got people getting married I'll on have, Saturday. I'll have you mine tomorrow. So. Okay. If you'll send me the top three or four picks, then we can try to get... And what time do you want to start on the 23rd? Oh. Uh, Probably the earlier the better, wouldn't it? Do you do five Randy, o'clock? Randy, he's the working man. Five's now. good to me. It's five I'm either way. I'll go wherever you guys Five p.m.? Yeah, it's five. Awesome. You All guys right. send me your top three or four names, and we'll crisscross them, and we'll let you know. And you want that by? Uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. And you're coming 
um, to a meeting tomorrow anyway at one o'clock. So you can just bring your names then if you want. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Bring your names tomorrow then because we got an executive at one. All right, moving right on. And then I guess let's uh, do the following week, Monday, Tuesday, or something for the, and then the for the transfer station. Okay. Well, wait a minute. No, we'll be gone. Yeah, the point. That next week, you guys may have to wait the first week, of, like the first full week of December. Yeah, that's fine. It's not a pressing on that. So. You have coverage right now. So. Yeah. And there's just, another issue Yeah, we might talk about between now and then. Because we were talking about hours at the transfer station. Yeah, just I think you guys might want to look at that. We can talk about that. Yeah. All right. Or we can talk. To, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna well actually we'll have another meeting but the 29th. So we can <coughs> determine when we're gonna do the yeah. On transfer that station. We'll stay with that. And next is Tuesday. All right. The next thing we have is a zoning map amendment ordinance. Is this from? Oh, this is this is from Martha. That's Martha. Yes, come aboard. Martha, I tried Martha, to put her off; they wouldn't let me. Martha, why are you? Uh, gentlemen, this uh, is a that result. Lightly. Right. Uh, this is the result of the uh, meeting on November the tenth that the plan commission had. Uh, the plan commission directed me to uh, send out letters, you know, do everything that is in accordance with having a rezoning on um, 2611, 2613, 2615, and 2017 North Melody Street, and that is in the middle of the Ritchie subdivision. It was discovered this past September that the... Um, properties, even though had been used uh, as a site for duplexes for many, many years, was still rezoned R1, which is single family dwelling, instead of R2, multifamily dwelling. So this simply brings these properties into uh, accordance with what the property is actually being used for. And I think you told me you checked with all the neighbors or nobody. Oh, I, we sent out 19 letters. We had two phone calls and one letter, one form letter returned. No objections. Two phone calls were from ladies that were, you know, when you get a certified letter, sometimes you get nervous. Mm -hmm. And both of them were nervous. They had no idea what it was about. So I had to explain it to them. They said, well, there's already duplexes there. And I said, I know. Yeah. That's why we're doing to, this. To clarify, these these property owners have always paid the proper taxes property taxes. right so it's not that they were paying over they were paying too much or they were paying too less they were paying the correct amount it was just it was just not right on the on, on the, the books it's been books. that way for years and we're just correcting it, it it has been that way since the 80s apparently yeah so uh so all i'm doing is requesting that you uh pass ordinance Number 2021-022. I'll, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Pat. John, John makes a motion to change the uh, the zoning map to to correct this rainy second set, and I'll make that unanimous. So wait a minute. You're not you're not going to sign. It. You're going to sign this one. <laughs> oh, it's got the color tabs on. Yes, it, it does. I I color tab everything. <laughs> <laughs> what are we from this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Make sure I signed it on the right side. Yeah, that's right. It would be bad if you signed it on the next side. And we have another. Why are you sitting there wrong? Got a John, John Henry. Thank you very much. I uh, thank you, your, gentlemen. Thank you, Marty. Good evening. Appreciate it. Uh, we have a uh, family leave request. Which, what's good name? Yeah. You, you've already looked at that. I'll entertain a motion to, to approve this. Oh. I'll make a motion to approve family leave. John makes a motion. Randy? I second. Randy sucks. So I'll make that unanimous. So.
Attorney comments. I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have anything. I can't no. say that I'm late. <laughs> All right. John, you got anything you want to add? Nope. Randy, you got anything you want to add? Uh, no. Without that? We've, we've I'll, entertain, I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, you didn't talk a lot. I'll entertain a <laughs> motion. talk a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll entertain, entertain a motion to dismiss. I'll make a motion to dismiss this meeting. I'll say that. Okay, I'll make that unanimous. Thank you. You did the adjournment. <laughs> Did the there we go. John did. What I do? Randy.